First Minister, will you resign if you breach the ministerial code? I haven't breached the ministerial code, but that's a matter for the independent adviser on the code to determine, and I will uh, robustly refute any suggestions that I have done so, and I'm not going to get ahead of that and start to talk in a hypothetical sense. Um, in terms of the committee inquiry, I'm actually quite relieved it's getting to this stage. It's been a long time coming. My own appearance before it, I think, has been postponed four or five times. So next week, hopefully, I'll get the opportunity to address all of the claims that have been made about me um, and subject myself to legitimate scrutiny. The Scottish Government, of course, made a mistake in this. But this week, I think it's uh, an opportunity for Alex Salmond. I hope he will come to the committee on Wednesday. He has made claims, or he appears to be making claims or suggestions that there was some kind of conspiracy against him or concerted campaign against him. There's not a shred of evidence about that. So this is the opportunity for him to replace insinuation and assertion with evidence. I don't believe he can because I know what he is saying is not true, but the burden of proof is on him. And if he can't provide that evidence, he should stop making these claims about people because they are not fair and deeply distressing. Have you seen his written evidence to the committee? Uh, no. Because the committee hasn't seen it either. Uh, well, he circulated uh, evidence that he put into the independent uh, advisor so and it, well I've seen reports uh, of that that was reported uh, in the, the media but you know I in terms of the assertions the submission uh, that I believe is going to be uh, published that doesn't change anything as far as I'm concerned because it has been widely reported and I've always fully expected to answer uh, on all of the claims made within that. And just that you've said all along that you'll see your piece at the committee and I'm curious as to why you're doing an interview now just hours before his evidence is due to be published? Um, look, we're getting into the end stage of this committee and I'm setting out that I am looking forward to the opportunity to set out openly and fully my answers to the questions that will be legitimately posed of me. But I'm also taking the opportunity to say that he's making very serious uh, claims uh, about conspiracy or plots against him that are completely baseless. And I'm simply making the point that this is his opportunity, the burden of proof of this lies on him. So this is his opportunity to replace the assertion with evidence. And, you know, that has to be this week. The people he is accusing of this are uh, not just women who brought forward uh, complaints, first and foremost, but also people who have given years, sometimes decades of loyal service to Alex Salmond. It's not fair to make these claims unless he has the hard evidence to back them up, which I don't believe he does. That doesn't mean the mistakes weren't making. You said that you've made mistakes during this. Have you actually made mistakes yourself? We know the Scottish Government made a mistake in the application of the procedure to the investigation of the complaints against Alex Salmond. In terms of my own actions, I faced a really difficult situation when I became aware of the complaints against him. Uh, I've never claimed to be infallible on anything um, but I acted in good faith I think I made the right judgments overall but I'll set that in detail to the committee. He says you've misled Parliament particularly about and I quote the nature of the meeting on the 2nd of April 2018. Do you feel you misled Parliament uh, on the nature of that meeting? No I don't. Alex Hammond came to my home on the 2nd of April 2018. Uh, he told me in quite gory detail what he was accused of perhaps even more notably um, he gave me an account of one of those incidents. Now, an issue has been raised about a meeting I had with his former Chief of Staff three days before that. I will set out to the committee my recollection of that meeting, but I stand by what I said in Parliament. You've already said in your written evidence that you forgot about that meeting. That, that meeting's not had the significance in my mind at any point that it clearly has uh, with others, but I'll set out my recollection of that, but I am firm of the view uh, that I stand by what I said to Parliament. But in terms of the nature of that, what Alex Salmond is saying, that it was clearly a government meeting and that you've misled Parliament on the basis of that, your husband, when he was giving evidence to the committee, suggested that he thought it was a government meeting. Well, he didn't know because he wasn't at the meeting and I didn't share the details of it. But I'll get to all of this with the committee. That's for next week. And I look forward to the opportunity. I'm not pretending it's going to be an enjoyable experience, but in many respects, it's a welcome opportunity for me to set the record straight in all of this. But Alex Hammond is the one who's making claims of conspiracy and plots against them. And this week really is his opportunity to bring forward any evidence he has on that. I don't believe that is the case. Um, and I think it is unfair to the people that are being accused of that, that these claims are being made. And were those meetings really the first time you'd heard about this? 
Look, I'll set out the 2nd of April. I stand by what I said in Parliament. I'll set out my recollection of the meeting three days well, before that. The first you've heard of any of these allegations? Well, I've said in my written evidence that back in the November prior to that, a, a media inquiry was made about allegations uh, against Alex Salmond at, at that point. Uh, I'll set all of this out to the committee. Um, I am welcoming the opportunity to do that. But, you know, at the heart of this here were complaints that were made about Alex Salmond's behaviour. Uh, the government made a mistake in investigating those. You know, people will judge my actions when I get the opportunity to set them out. But I acted with the best of intentions, in good faith. I stand by what I said in Parliament. And this was a difficult situation that was not of my making. Um, and I did my best to deal with it in the way that was appropriate. But if you did breach those ministerial I'm not, codes, you would consider it and you would have to go, potentially, Look, I, I don't believe I breached the ministerial code. That's not for me, ultimately, to judge. That is for the independent adviser. Um, and I'm not going to uh, get into hypotheticals around that. I'm entitled to due process, just like everybody else is, and I'm entitled to put my case and put my account, and that's what I intend to do. First Minister, thanks for joining us.